which I'm the chair of the committee. My role this evening is to ensure that the committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain to the rest of the people on the tables here tonight are, to my immediate right as the council solicitor, who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the council's planning officers, highway engineer and environmental health officer, who will present the applications this evening and give the technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see down both sides of the tables are elected members who will consider the application this evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualifying petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicants or their agents will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward council can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward council may speak on behalf of the residents. However, once the ward council has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may be followed by the committee. The applications will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on the application. The order of tonight's agenda will vary subject to the approval of um, the committee, as we have a number of people in for certain applications, which is uh, uh, agenda items 8, 10 and 11. If a site visit is requested and approved by the committee, this matter will not be discussed this evening and will be discussed at a subsequent planning meeting. We have had notification regarding Agenda Item 9, which is 47 Heath Road, Bevington. This has been withdrawn, so anybody who is here for this application this evening, if you want to leave now, then please feel free to do so. Okay, committee, can I have approval of the minutes on page 1 to 12, please? Yeah. Joe? It's just a correction there on the um, third paragraph down. Councillor Fox of Birds of Interest, it was by virtue was acquainted to the applicant, not the objector. And Mitienta, also the next paragraph down, by virtue being the board member of Mitienta, spelled Mitienta wrong. It should be Mitienta Living Association, sorry about that. Mitienta Living Council Association. Yeah. You've got it down for Mitienta Homes. That's what Okay, thank you very much. Are there any declarations of interest? Okay, I, I need to declare a prejudicial interest in the gender item made by virtue of being acquainted with, with, with one of the building uh, company partners. So uh, my deputy will actually take the chair for that part of the agenda and I will leave the room and won't take part in the debate. Are there any requests for site visits? <coughs>
This application was the subject of a United site visit on Tuesday. Permission is sought for the erection of a detached from the road at the rear of 8 Heron Road. Although the new dwelling will be located in the rear garden area of 8 Heron Road, its orientation and siting means it would be read as part of the ridgeway. Vehicular and pedestrian access to the new dwelling would also be via the ridgeway. The area is predominantly residential in character, with prevailing house types being detached and semi-detached two-storey dwellings. A bungalow is proposed on this site to ensure no overlooking and consequent loss of privacy would take place into adjoining gardens and properties. The site measures 15 metres by 12 metres and the proposed new bungalow would be located 600 millimetres off the southwest boundary and between 600 millimetres and 1.2 metres off the rear northwest boundary. The footprint of the dwelling is approximately 70 square metres. The principal outlook for the bungalow is at the front, with main windows facing onto the ridgeway. Outlook from the proposed dining room would be more restricted, with the window to this room being only 600 millimetres from the rear boundary. However, regard has been given to how frequently dining rooms are used, and as such, it is considered that as dining rooms are not ordinarily considered as principal accommodation, that the outlook provided would be acceptable. Similarly, although the kitchen window on a rear elevation is only 1.2 metres from the rear boundary, as the kitchen and living room are one through room and open plan, the larger living room window is south facing, thereby potentially receiving more sunlight and daylight through the day. It's considered that natural light and outlook would not be so poor as to warrant a refusal of permission. Whilst no private rear amenity space is provided, a small front garden together with the terrace and deck area to the side of the dwelling are proposed. Ostry parking is provided for one vehicle. The proposed development is considered acceptable and there is a qualifying petition of objection. Thank you, Matthew. Is the petitioner here?
Jesus in opposing this application. From the planner's report, HS4 is quoted, quoted and that is the main issue. Um, point one, proposal being that the scale relates well to surrounding property, in particular with regard to existing densities and forms of development. Uh, the scale is substantially smaller than any of the other properties on the Ridgeway. It is more in keeping perhaps with the garages than with the houses. And obviously as this is a development in the back garden, this is doubling the density of the housing. But we're concerned that the property is so small, there's virtually no storage space shown in the property. And it would appear to be far too small to be usable by anybody needing mobility aids. Um, there must be a risk of a follow-up application, perhaps, to make this property habitable. I don't know if the council can comment on that. Uh, 4.2, HS 4.2, proposal not resulting in detrimental change in the character. Uh, this, this one very small building may not itself be detrimental, but if accepted, there will be the precedent then for infill development in the area, and that would be detrimental to this area, we would argue. Uh, HS 4.3, the parking, off-street parking areas, garages, etc. There's only one small off-street parking space. Um, the applicants made space for one off-street parking in the remainder of uh, number 8 Heaven Road, having fitted the drop curb there. The Ridgeway is already a one-way street due to parked cars. Uh, this application removes the parking area used for number 8 Heaven Road in its original form. It's so likely we can expect, say, two vehicles for on-street parking at the shortened number eight property and potentially another on-street parking at this site. <coughs> so that's potentially another three on-street cars by the junction of the Ridgeway and Heron Road. So I think you may have noted on your site visit is quite busy anyway. I believe Heron Road's already considered an accident black spot. I believe the local MP is examining ways and means to deal with Heron Road. There's also the issue of the lane that runs along the back of the houses on Heron Road that exits onto the Ridgeway just by this property. So any additional parking is going to make sight lines, etc., even more difficult for exiting the, that back lane. Uh, we would also ask you to note there's already permission for four new houses uh, with a, a current appeal running for them to be eight houses associated with on-street parking, and that's just uh, three doors down the ridgeway from this plot. And it's already the issue of just how we manage to get these additional potential cars into the ridgeway anyway. Uh, section 4, provision of landscaping. Uh, it's a very small plot, um, a very small amount of ground left around it, so it's difficult to see that. Uh, section 7, provision of adequate communal garden space. Um, in the planner's report that's claiming that the halved size of garden for number eight is somehow substantial. Uh, we find that rather difficult to believe. Uh, in terms of comparing to the other gardens, it's really probably was only small to medium to start with. Um, obviously halving it makes it far less than substantial. Uh, we would argue that really this is resulting in a Major loss of garden space. Excuse me, you've got one minute left. It's okay, thank you. Right, um, the final comment regarding really other things like the floodplain. Um, this is very close to the River Burkett. Um, I don't know if anybody has looked at the latest EA analysis of the floodplain, but that shows most of the Burkett is likely to flood. Uh, that and the risk of the very high water table. Uh, is an issue already for people living in the Ridgeway, uh, with people having to pump out their gardens to improve their drainage. Um, but building in this area close to the floodplain would make the policy, this development, questionable under Wirral's Cool Wirral policy, which is looking at greater schemes. Uh, residents have commented on the low water pressure, etc. Yeah, that's your turn off. Okay. That's all. I made it through the most of it. Thank you. Is the applicant present? <coughs> Hey, 
same as Michael React. No, I'm just giving you the opportunity. Is there any more councillors present? Yeah. 
next page in this rich way. Through my trip against this idea. And although the plan, as I told us, you know, they find that acceptable, you know, if you just look at how close it is to that head on the road site, and the rich way site, I'm sure it'd be great, not very really satisfactory. And of course, the policy talks about having an adverse impact on the character of the area. I think that is the, the, the key point to crunch point here. If there was a stick with this tiny, this medium sized bungalow into this tiny little space, I think it would just look out of place, it would just look overpriced, and it would just look as if it didn't fit in and it was out of place and out of keeping. So I hope the committee will recognise that we don't want to have. We, I'm all in favour, I must say, I'm all in favour of using spare spaces for extra property, but not going to a ludicrous lens like this and sticking in, uh, trying to stick in a property in that space which just isn't that good for it. And the speaker before me has already mentioned the highways implications related to the property, so I won't go over that again. But there are problems, obviously. There's going to be too many cars around. So, colleagues, I could just only say to you, with the greatest respect to our plans, I think I would like to ask you if you would reject this application on the, mainly on the grounds of overdevelopment. Thank you very much. Ideal in that environment. This is not one of those 
by means of poor outlook to the rear of the proposed development. The, 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 the development would therefore be contrary to policy HS4, criteria for new housing development, of the World University Development Plan and the principles of the National Planning Policy Framework. Um, I've made a quick note of it. Do you have a second? <coughs>
Trees on and around the site are not subject to any formal or statutory protection and therefore would not need consent to be removed or cut back. The addition of one additional dwelling in this location is not considered to harm the character of the area or the immunities of neighbouring properties. As already presented, any issues relating to land ownership or the status of the adopted highway are not reasons to refuse planning permission, as consent is capable of being given, subject to all other material planning matters being satisfactorily addressed, whilst land ownership and other non-material planning considerations would need to be resolved via civil procedures. The proposed development is considered to comply with policy HS4 of the Rural Unitary Development Plan and is recommended for approval. There is a qualifying additional objection. Thank you, Matthew. Would the petitioner like to come forward? <coughs>
uh, in respect of number 14 and 16 get uh, well very close. In addition, the proposed development itself will impact on all the other residents in well very close with regards to the use of the turning area at the head of the close, which will be compromised. Uh, just one or two other comments I'd like to make. I've just got one minute left. Okay. Um, when, the, when the property was purchased, it would have been apparent then that there are in fact restrictive covenants which bind the development of the rear garden and state that only um, a shed or garden can be built in the rear garden. Um, therefore, uh, with respect, we believe the application should not be granted planning permission as it does not meet the Borough Council's policy HS4 with the National Policy Framework Agreement and also in light of all the objections that 